Hi everyone, welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jennifer Gagnon with the Forest Landowner Education Program at Virginia Tech. And today I'm joining you from a privately owned woodlot in Franklin County, Virginia. Franklin County is in Southwest Virginia, just south of the fair city of Roanoke. And today I have with me my friend and colleague, Bill Sweeney. And Bill is a forester with the Virginia Department of Forestry. And today he's gonna teach us about pre-commercial thinning. He'll talk about what it is, why a landowner might be interested in doing it. We will see what it looks like when it's being done and what it looks like after something like this has been done. Hi, my name is Bill Sweeney. I am a forester with Virginia Department of Forestry. My primary work area is Franklin County. And um, my job is basically to work with landowners to help them achieve their forestry goals, ranging anywhere from timber management to wildlife management to aesthetics. So today, the track that we're gonna be looking at first is a 400 acre tract um, that is primarily managed for timber. It's about 400 acres and has been planted in stages over the years. Uh, the stand that we're in right now is approximately six years old. Um, we usually start looking at pre-commercial thinning a stand um, around years four to five. Um, six is not outside of that range though. Um, and the stand is in good shape for, for getting the pre-commercial thinning done. Some of the things that uh, we look at when doing a pre-commercial thinning is will the stand respond positively um, or, will the, or will the trees be left uh, too small and be uh, susceptible to ice damage. So pre-commercial thinning is just that. It's done prior to uh, the stand being harvested commercially, meaning making money off of it. So pre-commercial thinning is done all out of pocket by the landowner. The costs are generally pretty variable depending on the county, depending on the crew, and depending on the site. Some site characteristics that can cause a job to be more expensive would be terrain. Is it steep? Um, density, how dense is the stand, how many naturals are coming up in your crop trees. Some of, you know, crews vary, you know, depending on which contractor you run with, uh, but costs generally are gonna be anywhere between 135 and uh, $200 per acre. Um, and then the state will cover 60% of that if you qualify for the pine bark beetle prevention program. Um, which is funded by the federal government. So he's working through, even though this is natural loblolly, the planted crop is discernible by size. As you can see, as he's walking through there, he's picking the superior trees, the trees that are taller, straighter. Those are typically the crop trees. And once you start um, identifying where your rows are, it makes it much easier. They can, act, they can work through faster. And, uh, and, and do a little bit better job of ident identifying uh, which trees need to be cut and which trees need to be left. Okay, so you're asking which are our crop trees? What's the difference between the natural loblolly that grew in after it was planted and the loblolly that, that we actually put in the ground here? So this is one of the crop trees. And um, as you can see, it's taller than the other trees that were coming in naturally. Um, a good example of one that's come in natural uh, is right behind it here. Now this is actually a Virginia pine. 
Um, but if you pan over, you can see some of the natural loblolly that's come in. So when they're, when they're thinning a stand that was planted in loblolly and the only naturals they have to contend with are Virginia pine, then it's really easy to tell the difference between the, the crop trees and the naturals that are coming in. Um, loblolly, it can, it can be tough, but when you have really nice specimens like this, it makes it a lot easier. And these guys are highly trained on how to identify naturals from the crop. So there are several methods for performing a pre-commercial thinning. What we're seeing here is a brush cutter at work. So it is all hand work. The, the guys come in and they take it to the density that you see here. Um, this is a spacing of 10 by 10, which is conducive to um, you know, good diameter growth. Um, we're gonna see an increase in wildlife habitat. So now this isn't the only way to do pre-commercial thinning. In some of the Eastern counties, uh, they actually use uh, machines like uh, uh, forestry mulchers to go through and actually cut rows through stands that are, that are really dense. Um, in this area, we typically only use brush cutters. It, the, the terrain is a little steeper typically here, um, and it just tends to be a more accurate and, and, uh, and deliberate way of doing a pre-commercial thinning. One of the reasons that we don't use a forestry mulcher here, in addition to terrain, is that a lot of the plantations that we plant here in the county are with specific tree species. And so when you're using a forestry mulcher, you don't have control over which species you're, you're thinning out. You're just cutting rows typically. Uh, with this, um, if the trees are discernible from the naturals, then we can deliberately remove the trees that have grown in naturally to, to free up the planted crop. People ask me all the time when I'm getting them signed up for cost share, what is a brush cutter? A brush cutter isn't just the person who's doing the cutting, but it's also a specific type of forestry equipment used uh, to do pre-commercial thinning. So essentially it is a souped up weed eater with a saw blade. And so we're gonna see if maybe we can get a close up of it. So we got to see the brush saws in action. Um, now we're gonna take a little closer look at the brush saw and what it is. As you can see, um, this, is a, uh, this is a Husqvarna 555FX. It is a forestry brush cutter. Um, this saw, when I last priced it, was about $1,700. And so I have a lot of landowners ask me, they're like, well, why don't I just go ahead and buy a brush cutter and, and do it myself? So it's hard work. You can see while we're in, while we're in the stand, those guys work hard. Um, that coupled with the price of the brush cutter, a lot of folks, especially if you have a, if you have a small piece of, a, piece of property that's being thinned, it's actually cheaper to use a crew to get it done than to just buy the saw. As you can see, this is, this is a uh, this is a large uh, machine. It's attached to a backpack. They actually need a harness to hold it. It's heavy. It's a very powerful saw, um, and it's got a very aggressive blade on it. Um, a lot of the saws, the the brush blade that blades that you'll buy at um, you know one of the one of the hardware stores is is not going to actually match up to one of these blades. These blades are designed for doing pre-commercial thinning. They're very sharp, um, very sturdy. All right, so now we're on a property that was planted two years ago. And so one of the things that we do as foresters for the state is after a landowner plants their property, we'll come back and initially do a planting quality inspection, and then we'll do a survival count a year later. And during that survival count, we're looking for two things. We're looking for how many of our crop tree survived that first year, but we're also looking at how many naturals are coming into the stand because that helps us plan uh, which stands in another two to three years we're gonna to need to pre-commercially thin. So this stand, as you can see, was a Virginia pine stand uh, prior to being cut. And so 
even though this was site prep sprayed with an herbicide, we still got a tremendous number of uh, Virginia pine naturals coming into the stand. So to give you some perspective, this is our crop tree, our loblolly pine, and all these other trees around it are Virginia pine. And so this tree is not free to grow. And so in another two to three years, we'll come back in and assess this stand and we'll go ahead and sign the landowner up for cost share to get this, this stand pre-commercially thin. Why, why is it important to give trees freedom to grow? Um, so there's, there's, there's a rhyme that I always remember. Sight determines height, but density determines diameter. And so the reason that we are giving these trees freedom to grow is so that we can get diameter growth on them. So the, the soil that they're growing out of, the, the parent material, the, the macro and micronutrients that are in that soil, as well as topography um, and aspect, which is the direction that a, that a slope faces, um, will determine how tall that, that tree's gonna get. But if we left it like this, then the trees would grow up to be a bunch of really tall pencils. And so we want them to be saw logs. That is the, that is the landowner's objective, is to, is to grow saw timber. And so that is the primary reason for doing a pre-commercial thinning. Okay, we're on a property that is slated to be pre-commercially thinned this season. So hopefully here within the week, we're gonna be on here doing a pre-commercial thinning. Um, this property was site prep sprayed, however, um, in the world of herbicidal, uh, herbicidal site prep sprays, not all sprays are created equally. And so um, what happened here was there was not enough pine control in the herbicide mix. And so this led to the stand coming back in natural loblolly. So prior to this being planted, it was a, it was, it was a mature loblolly stand. And so there's a lot of loblolly seed in the soil, obviously. Um, so, what we're going to do is to give you an idea of what some of these uh, pre-commercial thinning crews are dealing with. We're going to walk into the stand and let you see um, how difficult it is to figure out which trees are going to be the keep trees and which trees are going to be the cut trees. Um, and it'll give you an idea of how skilled they are at their jobs in, in doing the work that they do. We're getting ready to walk into the uh, Loblolly stand that's going to be pre-commercially thinned. And, the uh, landowner that we're working with on this job, his primary goal is also timber management. And so um, he did choose really good seedlings. He uses, he's using um, our Virginia's best seedlings. And so you can see how different they are compared to the, na the natural regeneration of Loblolly. They're taller, they're straighter. Um, and just genetically, they're, they're, they're better trees. That's something that the Virginia Department of Forestry has been working on for a very long time. We're constantly putting money into uh, research into growing better trees. So let's walk into the stand and, and see how, how easy it is for you to decide which trees we're gonna cut and which ones we're gonna leave. Follow me. One of the things that you're seeing a lot of as we're walking through here, in addition to pine, is blackberry. Blackberry is one of the earliest colonators on cutovers. And so these crews that are doing this job are not only having to decide which trees that they want to cut, but they're having to dodge briars and they're having to carry this, this machine that weighs pretty close to 30 pounds on their back for eight to 10 hours a day. And so it kind of gives you a, a, a really deep respect for the work that they do. Okay. All right, so looking around and looking up, which trees are we going to cut and which trees are we going to leave? This is a decision that the pre-commercial thinning crews are making every second. You saw earlier in the film how quickly they can move through a stand, and so they're making these decisions, you know, as they go, very quickly. We're going we're gonna to finish off this uh, session with a look at a stand that we waited too long to do a pre-commercial thinning on. Uh, this stand was pre-commercially thinned at age nine. Um, <clears throat> when you wait too long to do a pre-commercial thinning, 
you're really kind of, especially with, with good trees, you're taking a chance of this happening. These trees uh, were hit with ice and then they were hit with wind. And so there's, there's a lot of these down and uh, there's, there's also quite a few that are broken. And Loblolly is susceptible to ice breakage anyway. Uh, but when you allow it to go too long without being pre-commercially thinned, um, th they grow very tall, uh, but they grow skinny. We talked about density determining diameter. And so that's why we really shoot for year four to seven-ish, uh, four to five being the, the best years to do a pre-commercial thinning. Um, so there's still quite a few really good trees in this stand. Um, Ultimately, it'll be a good stand of trees, uh, but there, it did suffer quite a lot of damage, and um, it's directly linked to, you know, having been uh, pre-commercially thin too late. Um, I don't want this to be a reason why people don't get a pre-commercial thinning, but they need to be aware of what can happen if you wait too long, and so sometimes it's hard to justify the expenditure of money early on in the game. Um, but if you wait too long, this is, so, this, this is one of the things that can happen. Well, thanks, Bill, for the tour of Franklin County and the discussion of pre-commercial thinning. Thanks to all of you for spending 15 minutes in the forest with us. And we hope you join us again next Friday at 1215 for another edition. Have a great weekend.